Welcome to the Lab Safety Notes, and this is part two. Now, part one was the longer parts. When you look at the notes, all of the first page and the very top part of the second page of the notes was all from part two, and that took about 20 minutes. These next two parts, and I'm going to divide it into two videos, will be much shorter. Now, working with fire and heat, you will work with flames this year. We will work with some hot liquids. So when using Bunsen burners, we're going to review this. And the first time we actually use the Bunsen burners, we're going to review it again. So always wear goggles when heating things in a lab. So there are going to be times where you are going to have to wear goggles. And sometimes if it was just Bunsen burners, it's just goggles. Sometimes if it's a hot liquid, you're going to have to wear goggles and an apron. Now check to make sure the burner control valve is off. And I'll show you a picture of what that would look like coming up. Always light the match before you turn the gas on. And the reason for that is sometimes people can't light matches. So they'll turn the gas on and they'll try and light the match. They'll try and light the match. And if it takes 10, 15, 20 seconds, all the gas is going into the air. So sometimes when they write it, there's a little woof. As, as it not a huge flame pops up unless they can't light the match for several minutes. But usually by then I smell it and I turn off all the gas because I don't want an explosion. So make sure you light the match. You're going to hold the match off to the side at the top of the burner. Then you're going to slowly just put the tip. Then you turn the gas on and then you're going to put the tip in the flame or the gas and then you'll have a flame. So turn the gas on and then turn the gas completely off when the burner is not in use. So here's what a Bunsen burner looks like. Right here, this controls the air and down here it controls the gas. Now don't put your hand on this part you will burn it. This might be a little warm, but it's not going to be super hot. You can control this. You can operate this. I've never had anybody burn themselves by touching this. I've had people accidentally burn themselves by because they put their fingers or they accidentally touch this with their arms. Even after it's blown out and there's no more um, bunch of burn, although you'll never blow it out, you just turn the gas off. This controls the gas. This makes the flames larger. This makes the flames smaller. So the hottest part of the flame is actually at the top of that blue inner flame. You want a flame about pinky high. Now I know some of you have longer pinkies than others, but if your flame is longer than your pinky, you probably have too high of a flame. You should see this inner blue flame. If you don't, it's probably getting too little oxygen or too much oxygen. And we'll practice that the first time we use the Bunsen burners. We'll practice making sure that you get a really good flame. So this is not our setup here, but if you look over by the sinks, you should see that there's water faucets, and then there's ones that look like this. So a water faucet would look like this, where you turn it on. It's got the different parts where you can hold on and turn it. This looks just like this. Now right now it's off. This is in a closed position. However, if you turn it so that this point straight out, now it's on, and you always want to have it fully on. You never control the amount of gas with this. So if your flame's too high, you don't turn this down. You operate it from the Bunsen burners. Now here's the thing. When it was over here, it was off. Or if it was completely on this side, it could be off. So here, if they kept turning it and they put it all the way over here so it was facing this way, it would still be off. And some people get confused with that. They'll turn it on and they'll keep turning it all the way, then it'll be off again. So this is what it means. So you light the match first. Now the flame's going to be right here. So you don't want to hold your hand above this. You hold it underneath it. You have the match lit. Then go over and turn on the gas valve and then it'll start and then it, you should get a flame. So you never turn the gas on and then try and light the match. You light the match first then turn the gas on and then make sure your hand's below it. You're not putting it above it because you don't want to burn your hand. And then this controls the oxygen, so you can see the flame is on, and here someone is controlling the ox oxygen. You can make it, uh, if you can almost get no oxygen in there, and it'll look a lot like a candle, very weak flame. Or if you put too much oxygen, you can actually hear it. A lot of times you'll hear it, it'll sound like, <sighs> and I could be halfway across the room, and if everybody's Bunsen burner is good except yours, I can hear yours, because it'll be kind of crackling like that. And then this controls the amount of gas down here. Now, use test tube holders, tongs, 
the gripper or the gripper to handle hot items. Typically, I'm actually going to ask you to use both. So, and I'll show you this how to do this before we do the first lab with the Bunsen burners. But you use the gripper, use the tongs um, to handle hot items. You don't want to burn yourself. Now, do not put any part of your body over boiling liquids or flames. And one of the things that you would notice if we turned off all the lights and you had a Bunsen burner lit, we'd easily see the flame. But there's some times where we have all the lights on, we're doing a lab. So you got to be careful. You may not see the flame. So always assume if you see a Bunsen burner, there's a flame. So I don't want you to look and say, oh, look, the flame's not on. And you put your hand over it and oh, the flame was on. You just burned your arm. Keep flammable materials away from heat, including your hair, including your clothing. Always remember, hot glassware looks the same as cold glassware. There's going to be some times that we're going to get into class, we're going to start a lab, and the other class just finished a lab five minutes ago. So if you come in, I'm in the hallway, and you start putting your hands on the glassware or the ring stands, and I'll, tell you, I'll show you what those are when we do our first lab, you might burn yourself because you touched stuff because you weren't, and you, remember, you're not supposed to be playing with the equipment. Now, if for some reason you ever have to check the temperature, use the back of your hand. And you use the back of your hand so if it gets too close, your natural reflex is to pull it away. So never use the front of your hand. Always use the back of your hand. Hot glassware may shatter if it's placed under cold water. So if you get done with the lab and it's boiling hot water and you use the gripper to dump the water, don't rinse it out with cold water. It could shatter. Will it? Probably not, but it could. And if you break it, you are going to have to pay for it. Now, if a burn does occur, flush under cold water. Let me know. We'll flush it. Putting ice on it really doesn't help. We just want to make sure we flush. And if it's a really bad burn, we can send you up to the office. And who knows? If it's a really bad burn, we may have to send you to the hospital. So that is the end of part two. So it was a much, much shorter video. So make sure you have all these notes. Thanks.